A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found, our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this was not so in the sight of God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the leaven, that is, the hypocrisy, of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that, can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sixteenth century Spanish mystic friend, collaborator of St. John of the Cross, founding together the Reformed, or discalced, that means without shoes, Carmelites, friars, and nuns, and author, a doctor of the church, the first woman to be declared a doctor of the church. Certain saints, a very small group, are given that title because their teachings are so valuable for the instruction of the people of God in the, in the spiritual world life and in the understanding of the teachings of the church. So is St. Teresa of Jesus, St. Teresa of Avila, whom we honor on the church calendar today. She authored spiritual books called The Way of Perfection and The Interior Castle. You know, she would have been very happy about today's gospel because it actually contains one of the spiritual 
sayings she is most well known for. And what I would consider one of the most important pieces of spiritual advice that any of us can be given. Let nothing, let me read her words, let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Or to boil all that down into the shortest version, let nothing disturb you. This is the result, this spiritual admonition, and if we can practice this, is the result of believing what Jesus said in this gospel passage. Truly, the hairs on your head have been counted. God notices a sparrow falling to the ground. Is he not going to notice what is happening to you? That absolute trust, that conviction God is there, he's all-powerful, he's got the whole world in his hands, which means he has me in his hands, and he has me as much in his hands as if I were the only thing he had in his hands. You see, with God, it's, there's no difference. He can have the whole world in his hands, or he can have just you in his hands, and for you, it's the same. It's the same. It's exactly the same. That's not true with us. We carry one thing which has our full attention and our full protection. We try to carry a hundred things at once. We start dropping things. God doesn't drop things. God drops nothing. If we're trying to pay attention to a hundred different things at once, we're going to be distracted. If we're just focusing on one thing at once, then we can focus. But with God, He can focus on an infinite number of things. And it's just the same as if he were only focusing on you. For him, it's exactly the same. We don't know what that's like. It's not that way for us. Let nothing disturb you. Doesn't mean everything's going to go our way. She wasn't saying that. She wasn't saying we should expect that. In fact, we should expect the opposite. Things are going to go wrong. Things, bad things are going to happen. We're going to be very sad at various times. But let nothing disturb you. You know, St. Francis, Francis de Sales was also a great spiritual teacher on this point, which also St. Paul made in his letter to uh, the Philippians. Dismiss all anxiety from your minds, he said. Rejoice in the Lord always. A truth, an admonition based on this, on this very same point that we are making. And St. Francis wrote that if you look in a pool of water, a pond, let's say, if you disturb the water, it will get all murky because the dirt on the, on the bottom of the, the, the pond will, will start to arise and spread throughout the water. You won't be able to see anything clearly. That's what it's like when the soul is filled with anxiety. But we follow St. Paul's admonition, dismiss all anxiety from your minds. We follow St. Teresa of Avila's admonition, let nothing disturb you. And that water, St. Francis de Sales says, will be crystal clear. And you'll be able to see right to the bottom. And he says, this is how it is with life. We can see God's will. We can see the meaning of what's going on around us. We can think clearly, decide rightly if we don't let that anxiety take over, let nothing ever disturb you. I remember when I first started going to spiritual direction, I was a teenager in high school and went to my parish priest, who, by the way, was a saint. And this was one of the first things he, he, he told me in spiritual direction. Let nothing ever, ever disturb you. Be at peace. Because this is not, see, this is not wishful thinking, and this is not denial of reality. Some people seek peace by denying reality. Let's not pay attention to the problems. Well, if you don't pay attention to the problems, you can't solve them. That's not what this is. You pay attention to the problems, but you pay attention to the bigger reality. The bigger reality? 
Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them escapes the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. You are worth more than many sparrows. Do not be afraid. St. Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Keep us at peace that we may see clearly the will of God and have the strength to carry it out. Amen.